From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait! Ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Ooh ha ha! Enough of the Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Ooh! Bop! What's up, too? This is from Brooklyn. I'm at the greenhouse. I'm going to show you how I tackle a little issue that you may or may not run into in your greenhouse. First of all, before we do any of this, I'm just going to let you know that you have to let the greenhouse breathe for a few hours a day because the humidity builds up. And I'm going to get the camera and show you just how much humidity builds up in the greenhouse. As you can see, it is also storage for my 40 project that's coming soon. But look how much water. And this isn't rain. This is condensation. As you notice, everything else is dry. Condensation builds up on the plastic. And you will end up with heavy, heavy, what I think of as a barometric pressure issue inside your greenhouse this is how much condensation is building up due to the humidity inside this greenhouse so you have to keep those greenhouses open if you have containers or anything in your uh, systems you will end up with green water now this is green water because what i'm getting to is i ordered a extra solar powered pump and i'm going to open that for you shortly but since the water is not circulating because I don't have any pump in here and it's very shallow, you're going to get green water. That's fresh water. This is also fresh water, green water, which is good for planktonic species, but that means it is very hot inside here. If you look over here, the temperature in the greenhouse with it closed is just under that 80 mark, which is actually good. I think that's because of all the rain that we had, but... Uh, Look at the salt water system. This is salt water. I cleaned this out the other day. It is building up a ton of planktonic algae, which I don't want to call plankton because I'm not a scientist, but is what people that have been in the hobby a long time consider green water. If you do like this, which a little, what I use is a minnow net. I go fishing, I have a minnow net, or you could use a shrimp net. You can actually see all of that is green plankton planktonic algae planktonic algae is what turns your fish tanks in the house green now if this was inside the house you would see hair algae but since this is outside it's very humid in here you don't see hair algae this is salt water if you see down there you see the life the rock is coming to life that's a little bit of sand don't look at the white but i'm going to add the solar powered pump to the salt water project over here. So bear with me as I open it up and get you in for a closer look. All right, I had to make some adjustments to the tripod here, which I'm still doing because I got a my portable tripod and it isn't as stable as my big one. But anyway, if that bears with me, I'll open up this box and show you that this is basically what you'll get when you order one of those solar powered uh, fountain ponds. I ordered this one on eBay, they're like 10 bucks, anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks, depending on the quality of the one that you get. It comes with a floater, which is uh, to give you that out of water uh, fountain effect. If you see my older videos, you'll see in the, uh, the six foot system, I have some that are above water and some that are below water. The above water really agitates the surface and oxygenates the water. So I may or may not use that depending on how strong this pump is. And secondly, you will have the actual solar panel and pump unit. Here's your solar panel here. Um, usually these come with about a 20 foot cable. I don't know if this in has in its uh, product description how long the cable actually is, but they're usually about 20 feet or so, so it's pretty long. Um, of course, it doesn't specify fountain head pressure. Okay, let's go over the stats while I have the paper in my hand here. It runs solar power, but it is the equivalent of 1.5 watts of solar power to the pump. So the pump is generating about 1.5 solar panel power, pump power 1.2 watts, and maximum head pressure 100 centimeters. Um, I'm not good at the conversion, so I'll just say it's good enough to do the job. So basically, as you've seen in the other videos, when the sun is out, this panel you got to put in a nice sunlit area that gets at least five to six hours a day 
usually pointed east where the sun comes up in the morning is where you're going to get the best easiest way to decide that go outside sunniest spot in your uh, yard or area the spot that's getting the most sun start facing that to your panel so that at least you'll know that you'll get until about 12 o'clock in the afternoon you'll get from daybreak to mid-afternoon full sun and this is your pump right here now the good thing about You'll know if you get a good one, and these aren't the most expensive. Wow, they just cut on <laughs> in my hand, and it's not in the water. Don't run them dry. This just cut on with, like, I'm in the shade, and it just cut on. So that's a good sign. I know the pump works. Um, they push a lot of water, and when you move the water, you alleviate a lot of problems. Stagnant water, green algae, dead spots, um, a, a, a overabundance of mosquitoes which I'm seeing now I'm doing this at the end of the day so it's about mosquito time they're coming around and flying around now but you got different head adapters you have different uh, ways of mounting it you can mount that and it just cut on again so basically for this you would push this through here push out the little cork and then stick this other piece through there and then you could put whatever Boy, this is cutting on it. I know it's working, that's for sure. And this will float and generate some good flow. So now if you don't put the spray bar on here, it'll just basically push water up and flow over the side. Which since this seems like a pretty strong uh, pump, if you hear that, it's cutting on in my hand in the shade. Um, I'll probably try that first. Um, then you can play with all your different sprinkler heads if you want the drizzle effect and all of that nature and that what whatnot. But... Uh, that's what I'm gonna do right now so I'll leave with that and I'll get this set up and get you uh, to see how it works now what I've decided to do is making solar powered box filter as I've showed you guys how to do or actually maybe let's just take this moment to show you how easy it is to do basically you need a box filter which I have about a hundred of these laying around box filters especially one with these little slits and I just take a scissor or something and just snap it so that I can open it like this. I take the filtration strainers out. I take my solar powered pump, making sure that it fits inside this little thing like this. This would be the bottom. And I think you know where I'm going with that. So that fits. You want to take this. Let me see it so you can see. Just work it really carefully into your little opening without damaging the wire. You gotta apply a little pressure so that you don't break the box, which I've probably done about a zillion times, but there you go, you get that in there like this. Now, and mind you, the pump is running in my hand. <laughs> it's running while I'm doing this. And stick it down in there as best you can. Don't expect it to be perfect. You'll have to finagle it a little bit. Probably holding it upside down is the easiest which will take it off camera for a minute and hold that upside down, get it in the hole. Uh, that's what she said, get it in the hole. But um, um uh, let me see, turn it around, put some slack in the wire, feed it in there, and boom, now you got a box filter that is powered by the sun. All right, and it is a pain in the neck. Okay, there you go. I know I couldn't get that all on camera, but there it is. Your filter is squeezed into the box. Now all you got to do is put your filter floss or whatever you're going to do. I don't particularly run carbon outside because I'm a big advocate of nature finding a way. But this will help in getting rid of green water because you're going to pull all the particulate through your box filter and there you have a solar powered box filter it also keeps your pump in place so now I'll just fill it with water which takes about a second turn it sideways make sure you get all the air out so it doesn't float around I'll wedge some rocks around it to keep it in place hard to do it with one hand of course as you can imagine and if you want, you could put charcoal in there to keep it from juggling around. It typically won't juggle around once you got it and once it sits in water for long enough. And it is the end of the day, so it's not really running at full power. 
but you can see just from the end of the day sunshine that water is pushing through the top and it is creating that nice circle which disperses any surface water you see like bugs try to land on there when I get fish in there they'll feed off of those and things like that but that is how you power your container pond by the sun um, I know a few people asked me about that hard to get it on video because I don't have my helper I'm gonna start getting my daughter to help me a little bit more with the uh, videos but if you have river rock gravel you could put carbon in there that keeps it weighed down I basically just keep it weighed in with some rocks I'll move them around a little better and uh, power your system by the Sun all right now of course when the Sun goes down this isn't gonna do nothing but it'll aerate your system long enough during the day that you won't have to worry about it by night all right that's it this is d from brooklyn love peace and hair grease click that subscribe button see if i fall on my face see if i succeed if so how tune in next time this is d signing out